Hi, this is Shadi and welcome back to Judoka Profile and in this episode I'm gonna be taking on arguably the greatest judoka of all times Ryoko Tamura Tani one of the most accomplished athletes that you will ever come across I'm gonna be diving into everything that has to do with personal aspects athletic achievements post-retirement career and also achievements and we're gonna see what makes this judoka so special and also the greatest of all times so let's begin if you are new to this series each episode is divided into four parts origins and upbringing where is this person from and how did they start judo Two career highlights some of the most memorable moments of their career and even post retirement three kumikata trying to analyze the grip fighting and tactics and number four top three finishers they often use to finish off their opponents whether it is tachiwaza or neiwaza so first we start with origins and upbringing so Ryoko Tamura was born in Higashi-ku in Japan on September 6, 1975, which makes her 44 years old today. She started judo at the age of 7 years old and later on went on to study literature in university. And her first big competition was at the age of 15 years old and she beat Karen Briggs, who was already at that time four times world champion. So just at the age of 15 she already showed the incredible amount of potential that she has for the future that she will make in judo now let's switch over to career highlights and the first highlight that i want to discuss is the world championship title reign and ryoko tamura actually has seven gold medals as world champion seven times world champion and one bronze being in Barcelona in 1991 all of them are in the minus 48 uh, kilograms she was actually at very short stature she's actually four foot nine so she never had to cut weight I think this probably contributed a lot to her uh, success in competition because cutting weight and really weakens the body and weakens the mentality she only had to focus on competition so she had gold medals from 93 in Hamilton 95 in Shiba 97 in Paris 99 in Birmingham and 2001 in Munich and 2003 in Osaka it's funny how they're all spaced out two years and 2007 in Rio de Janeiro that was her final world championship a win so again she is the greatest of all time for a reason seven time world champion and one time third place and beating one of the best in the game while going through it like i said karen briggs was just at the beginning the second highlight that i want to discuss is her olympic record ryoko tamura tani has five olympic medals i'm gonna say it again five olympic medals two of them are gold two of them are silver and one is bronze so in 92 and 96 in barcelona and atlanta she finished second in nine in 2000 and 2004 in sydney and athens she finished first and her last olympic games in 2008 here in front of you you see she finished third with a bronze medal so five olympic medals you can argue that tadahiro nomura has three gold medals in the olympics but she has five so imagine from 92 to 2008 16 years 16 long years and you're still on the olympic podium which is something uh, is unheard of in whatever discipline you might be in 16 years on the podium either first second or third is truly unbelievable and i doubt it will ever be repeated again the third and final highlight is simply her legacy so ryoko tamura 
was honored by by many things and many aspects for example she went from fourth to sixth down skipping the fifth and also her wedding was a national event in japan it was viewed by 20 million spectators on tv also the birth of her first child was uh, spectated by a lot of press and also she was an ins inspiration for two characters of world heroes and fighters history fighting video games ryoko izumo and ryoko kano are largely based on her and the final uh, thing that I want to say is that she went into politics after a very long athletic career so in 2010 she was introduced to politics by her mentor Ichiro Ozawa and in 2010 she ran for a seat in the Democratic Party in the 2010 elections and actually landed a spot and that's where she decided to uh, retire from competitive judo because it was way too much responsibility for her and also she was 35 years old but she was willing to continue if it wasn't for politics so imagine the the will of that woman and also we talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger being this uh, larger than life character a bodybuilder who won many world titles which is actually just seven uh, Ryoko has seven world titles and also the Olympic record and she went into politics and contributed to the betterment of her entire country and the government of Japan. So I've never seen, like we talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger, but we never talk about Ryoko Tamura, which is honestly one of the most accomplished people of all times, not just in judo in general. Now let's switch over to Kumikata and talk grip fighting. So Ryoko Tamura is right-handed and the Japanese have this very basic yet so effective Kumikata of sleeve and lapel. She often uses it, flinches with Seonage, finishes with Kochi and many other uh, techniques that she has excelled basically using the sleeve and the lapel sometimes because back in her day it was legal she would go for the legs after she would go for the lapel so her sleeve and lapel is very basic but yet very versatile she has used it for so many uh, like i said techniques whether it's teiwaza or ashiwaza ryoko tamura excelled at the variety of the sleeve and lapel and the intricacies of grip fighting and finally the top three finishers and the first one is the Seo Enage. being of short stature and incredibly strong she excelled at the Seo Enage with many variations to it Eri, Morote Seo Enage and Ippon Seo Enage and sometimes she would use it as an opening for many techniques like the Kochi Makikomi and here the Seo Otoshi and also the Kataguruma back then leg grabs were legal so she would use it as an opening for a brilliant and huge kataguruma uh, a brilliant judoka that has perfected the seonage both as a tokuwaza and also as an opening for other techniques the second technique is her ashiwaza or foot technique and one of them that shines the most is the osotogari now she has many uh, Ashiwaza used in order to take down her opponents like Sasai, Kosoto, uh, Osotogari and uh, a brilliant Oguruma. Now being of short stature that really helped her also the Ashibarai. Now again being of short stature it made these foot sweeps and foot reaps very unpredictable so her Ashiwaza is phenomenal. And finally the Morote Gari or reaping with both hands since it is a special edition of Judoka Profile I'm gonna talk about her single leg takedown back then it was legal she did it very perfectly Morote Gari means uh, reaping with both hands so it can be either double or single leg BAM and again she was very efficient in her Judo quick thunderous and of course her short stature really helped her to gain advantage of having her 
how do you say, center of gravity lowered and surprising her opponents with Ashiwaza and also lifting them with Seonage or just simply taking them down, shooting on them and literally getting that Ippon out of nowhere. So again, a brilliant judoka that deserves all the attention and it's funny that we don't talk about her enough. Um, we are very enamored with these new ones like Uta Abe, Daria Bilodid. I mean, Uta Abe, I would say that she has uh, the drive of Tamura. Uh, she really goes for that Ippon. When she wants that Sode, she would literally go all out for it. She kind of reminds me of Tamura, but Tamura is just on another level. But then again, Abe is only 19 or 20 years old still. So we'll see what she holds for the future. So if you enjoyed this episode, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.